Hello, and thank you for taking the time to learn about the Canary system. My name is Kyle Kensinger, a solution consultant with Canary. I will be your presenter for the webinar today, and joining us for the live demo of the presentation will be Jeff Nepper. Jeff is the Executive Director of Business Development at Canary. We will start out today with an overview of the Canary system, followed by a live demo of the software. After the live demo, we will go over the pricing model of the system. And today we're focusing on data. I'm excited to show you how Canary can help you easily use your process data to make the right operational decisions. Every company understands they need to maximize their process data. And in order to do it, they're all looking for the same thing. All they need to do is make their process data easy to use. Doing this will unleash their team into data rock stars. Companies need an easy to use data solution that can provide automated workflows and ultimately unleash data rock stars within their organizations. But there's a huge problem that is currently holding companies back. Companies are not maximizing the value of their data. And it's not their fault. There are obstacles in the way. The sheer volume of process data is difficult, expensive to manage, and requires specialized skills. Maintaining IT OT balance can create unique challenges. You must continue operations with a production mindset while balancing security. And to top it off, most solutions that help you maximize time series data are way too expensive. It shouldn't be this hard to find a solution that delivers the results you want. It probably has you feeling frustrated, but there is an easy solution. At Canary, we know how you feel and we can help guide you. For over 35 years, we've helped engineers and organizations just like yours. The Canary system has been installed over 18,000 times in over 55 countries and 20 industries around the globe. And what we've learned is whether it's a large complex use case or a small OEM solution, every customer we work with has the same core ideas of what they wanna do with their data. The first thing we hear repeatedly is that we wanna store everything. We don't know exactly what will be valuable in the future, but if we can store everything, we will have what we need when we determine that we need it. And going right along with storing everything is the idea of faster data granularity, the level of detail within your data. The polling rate is increasing. What was once every hour for remote data in the field or every 15 minutes can now start to become every minute or every 15 second data. Another core principle is making sure everyone on your team has access to the data that's being collected. Maybe vendors or contractors need to access the data. Finally, the fourth piece, and maybe the most important, is the software we can use to interpret and act on the data. If you can give your team a large volume of data with a high frequency polling rate, make sure they have access to it, and give them the right software tools to interpret the data, you're going to have success. These are the four main things we wanna talk about when looking at the Canary system. The system provides all the necessary software to store large quantities of process data at high resolution, allows secure data access, and provides end users with powerful self-serve analytic tools. And the live demo portion of the webinar will really highlight this feature. How do we achieve these goals? Well, there are three steps proven to work based on our experience. The first step we will discuss is collecting and storing your data. Starting with Canary Collectors. These help you reach out to all industry standard protocols. You can log data directly from your process into our system with MQTT Sparkplug B OPC UA and DA, SCADA systems, SQL databases, CSV files, and web and .NET APIs 
to create your own custom collectors. A very typical architecture would look something like this, with your PLCs and devices in the field. You probably already have an OPC server or MQTT broker that your devices are speaking to. We would install our collector software on the OPC server. Then we would build out a Canary Historian server with the rest of our software, which the client tools will connect to. It is important to note that Canary Historian does not impact the PLC or the devices, nor can it write records back through the OPC or MQTT to those devices. And the client tools have no way to impact the OPC server. That access stops at the Historian. Let's talk about our store and forward technology. The Canary Collector will be installed local to your OPC server or MQTT broker machine. We would also install the sender service. The sender service will point across the network to the Canary Historian, where it is matched to a receiver service that's local to the Historian. So the data is configured with the Canary Collector. The sender service pulls the data from the OPC server and then pushes it across the network to the receiver service. The receiver service checks it into the historian and communicates to the sender that the message was received and written to the database. If for any reason the network is not available, that's okay. All the data will be cached locally. The admin is notified that we are no longer receiving data into the historian from that logging instance. When the network connection is available again, we will automatically backfill data in real time. The system allows for dual logging and sending data from one sender to multiple receivers and historians. When we talk about collecting and storing data, it's all about the database. And here's where we highlight the Canary Historian. The Canary Historian is a NoSQL time series database. Specifically built for process data and industrial automation, it's been optimized for performance. Best of all, no database administration skills are required to maintain the Historian. The Canary Historian is highly scalable. Whether you're tracking 100 tags or 2 million, it is the exact same software install. All that changes is the licensing. You can dual log and use Historian Mirror Service to mirror data from one Canary Historian to another. Looking at how this fits within the architecture, the Mirror Service on the Corporate Historian pulls the data on schedule and dual logging pushes data in real time to the corporate historian. No matter how large your system gets, the performance remains constant and does not degrade over time. You can achieve over 1.5 million writes per second, and you can read over 2.5 million reads per second out of the historian. Recently at one of our larger user groups of upstream oil and gas, we were asked to do a test of 1 million updates per second using standard server equipment. Four different machines were built out, each one with a quarter of a million tags in the sender service. And all are pushing across a standard network to a 1 million tag historian. If we look at the historian, what we see is the receiver service picking up 1 million tags and moving them into the historian. You will see a little fluctuation in the updates per second, and that's where the store and forward comes into play. We ran this test and monitor machine resources running a standard server of 6 core 3 gigahertz. What we were looking for was maintaining our CPU usage under 20% in 
and keeping our memory somewhere between 15 and 60% on the machine. And throughout the course of the tests, we were able to do this successfully with a standard off the rack server. So what is a tag? A tag consists of TVQ, timestamp, value, quality, as well as metadata properties like engineering units, high-low set points, GPS coordinates. These are all fully customizable data properties. Once all the data is written to the historian, it is important to start thinking about how we will compress it in order to keep our data footprint as small as possible. Canary has developed a unique lossless compression algorithm with best-in-class performance three times data compression. Because it's lossless, we are never interpolating data, never cutting data values. The unique raw values are being stored every time. In review, when talking about collecting and storing data, our Canary system is out of the box ready. Everything is pre-integrated in the system. Between store and forward and lossless compression, you never have to worry about data loss. Ultimately, Canary has created a database that you can depend on. That wraps up the first step. Step two is all about assigning context to your data. A common problem we see most companies face is something like this. They have a piece of equipment a site or a SCADA system with a tag naming structure that's being followed. It's being written into the historian. But then somewhere else in the organization, there is another piece of equipment or site or SCADA system that's doing the same thing, but using a different set of tag names and is also being stored in the historian. Normally, this does not impact production. Your operations are likely still going to work just fine even with different naming conventions. But it creates a problem when your engineers are trying to generate reports on the data, trend the data, and trying to learn from the data because they have to remember all these different tag naming structures. Imagine if you could leave the operation alone, not change the PLC, not change the SCADA system, but unify the namespace so that for reporting purposes, all tags follow your desired format. Well, with the Canary system, you can do just that. You have the ability to create virtual views of the data, influencing how the client can interact with the data without ever altering the data in its physical storage. When a client reads data from the historian, the view service is the filter that the client looks through to browse, retrieve tags, and read data from the historian. By utilizing the view service, you can essentially change the way the client sees and interacts with the data inside the historian. You can reshape an alias to tag format inside the historian, and you don't ever change the historical record. If you create multiple views of that historical record, then you can offer very specific security-based permissions to the client of how they see the data inside the historian. Does the client see the data through filter one or filter two? That is the power that Canary has given you as the admin. Security permissions or Active Directory login can ensure that your team has access to the data they need while not overpowering them with data that may not apply to their role. Inside the historian, you have these 10 pieces of IO. We apply a virtual view and now the client sees this unified naming space. If we switch over to line two, the client still sees the same format, but the tags retain their uniqueness. Notice as I switch back to line one.
The client will see a structured unified namespace and the PLCs or devices never need to be touched or altered in any way. So how do you create virtual views? While well, regular expressions give you the ability to restructure tag names while maintaining tag uniqueness. If your tag names don't have as much logic as you would like, that can be supplemented through reading a CSV file or SQL database. What else can be done with virtual views? Once tags have been restructured and a unified namespace has been established, you can also create custom asset models. Your organizations are likely already talking about your equipment from an asset viewpoint. So if you had a site with three lines and those lines are made up of boilers, fillers, and water mains, it might look something like this. Notice that line two has two fillers and line three has two boilers. How would you use virtual views to capture all the assets on this site? We have the unified namespace for the tags. And notice in this particular namespace, the second branch of the tag name tells us what the piece of equipment is and the instance or count of the equipment. So you see that line one has a boiler with three tags, a filler with five tags, and a water main with two tags. You can use virtual views to create common tag names and group them into assets. Looking back at the site example, there are four boilers, one on line one, one on line two, and two on line three. Now let's see how the virtual views would handle this particular asset. Using the unified namespace model that's been built out, you see line one, boiler one, and then the three common asset tag names. And the same with each of the other boilers on the other lines. Common tag names with unique identifiers show you exactly where the asset is and what else it impacts. So what is the benefit? Beyond giving you better organization, it gives your team the ability to make specific requests based on asset types. For example, show all boiler temperature tags. Or more specifically, it helps automation experts automate their workflow. Filtering based on asset tag conditions means you can immediately see all boilers with the temperature outside of a desired range. There is power in the ability to automate workflow and easily use your process data. You no longer need to hunt for information, but can instead quickly generate reports with the information that you need. It is key to point out that models do not break if assets don't match up perfectly. If you have a dynamic process and you're constantly bringing assets online or offline, the virtual views looks for tags to be dropped out of the historian and updates your model automatically. Now that you've been introduced to virtual views, let's move on and examine another way Canary can assign context to your data. And the next piece of software in the system is the calculation engine. If you think about it, your car's dashboard is feeding you raw process data. How fast am I going? How many miles are on the odometer? How much fuel is left in the tank? That's all raw data. Additionally, if a check engine light comes on, you're looking at condition-based data. Many cars today also have an indicator of range or how many miles you can drive at your current fuel level. That's running some type of calculation to estimate that KPI. If we look at these three different types of data, traditionally in the historian, all we have is raw data. But if we have these raw data tags and group them into assets, we can create other calculated tags of condition-based rules and calculated KPIs. With the calculation engine, you can deploy a single calculation to all instances of an asset type. It runs in real time while also backfilling, and more than 70 functions are available. If we look at the asset tags of a boiler, we see there's a temperature tag. 
Every five seconds or one second, it's pulling to get a new temperature. We could run a calculation anytime there's a boiler to ask it to use the temperature tag and give us an average 60 minute temperature for that tag. Just like for the filler, we could use the out bottle count and out bottles rejected to determine the percentage of rejected bottles. Just like you can do condition-based tag calculations, you can also key off those calculations to monitor asset health. You can create a series of logic or rules to determine whether an asset is in an alert state or not. Then you can do reporting and pull analytics based around the events. Event monitoring provides condition-based asset monitoring. Reporting based on event performance. And analytics surrounding the event durations. You could construct a rule that is a trigger for the event. We ran this using simulation data and here's what we got back. Here's a list of instances of events within the conditions we've structured at each of the various sites. Notice you get the source, start and end time, duration, as well as analytic properties associated with the event. All this information is customizable and can be tailored to fit your needs. That wraps up the second step. Now let's focus on maximizing your operation. Here's where we examine different pieces of software that are client facing. Starting with Axiom. Axiom is our trending, dashboarding, and reporting tool. Built with HTML, it works with any modern web browser. Designed for self-serve reporting, Axiom changes the traditional model of the client asking the SCADA team to produce a trend chart. It makes it easy for the end user to produce their own trend charts. Here are a few examples of charts that have been produced in Axiom. You can see it is easy to incorporate trend charts and tables of data. You can also add things like donut gauges or spark lines. Axiom can be used to build applications that are less about trend lines and more about looking at data tables or graphs. Axiom is a completely blank slate, which allows you to customize and build out whatever you need to visualize. You will see in the live demo in just a few moments just how easy Axiom is to use. The Excel add-in is another great tool provided by the Canary system. We know that many of your team members are already using Excel. The add-in enables you to connect your Canary data to Excel. This helps quickly solve reporting needs and gets raw data and aggregated process data out of the historian and back to your customers. It also gives you the ability to build event monitoring on the fly. Let's look at how we will get a tag list using the Excel add-in. You can filter and grab all level percentage tags out of the data set and put them in column A, click the last value and ask it to find the last value for each of these 500 tags. And just like that, in a few clicks and a few seconds, you can discover the last known values for each of those tags. Canary connectors make it easy to get data out of the Canary historian and into other systems and pieces of software. Publish service, web API, MQTT publishing client, SCADA connectors like Ignition by Inductive Automation, ODBC connector, if you need to expose the Canary historian in an SQL-like manner to make queries against our database. OPC HDA server speaks directly to our Canary historian. That wraps up the three steps on how we can help you get unstuck on your journey to digital transformation. Now we will kick off the live demo so you can see just how easy our software is to use. The live demo will highlight Ways to log data from Ignition, from Ignition MQTT Sparkplug tags, 
create a virtual view, build a calculation tag, design an Axiom dashboard, automate a daily report, as well as integrate back into Ignition. Thanks, Kyle. I'm excited to show you the Canary system in action. And as you saw from the agenda, it might seem a bit ambitious, but I think we can do everything in that list in less than 25 minutes. Before we get started, I want to explain that we're going to begin this demo from an administrator's position and then shift to a client position. The administrator uses the Canary administrative service to be able to uh, work within the Canary system. I'm going to go ahead and launch that and we will see a panel for every aspect of the Canary system that an admin needs to touch. The very first thing we want to do is create a data set or a folder of tags that we can log data to. I'll use the historian panel and go to configuration. Now that we've created the data set, we can see we have the live demo data set as well as the standard diagnostics data set that comes with each system. Next, I'll move over to the Ignition SCADA system by Inductive Automation. And here I'm going to use the Canary module that's been developed to move data from the Ignition system to Canary. I need to name a configuration service and then tell it where the sender service and the historian are located. Once that's done, I'll go to the Ignition Designer, browse for my tags, and then affiliate those tags to the Live Demo storage provider. Now all of my Ignition tags that I've selected have history enabled and are actively logging data to the Canary Historian. We can verify this by looking back into the Canary Admin. The live demo dataset has 30 tags actively being written to it. And I can see that they're coming into the sender service, to the receiver, and now the Historian. When a client browses the system for tags, they're going to browse through the View service. Currently, there's only one active view, and that's the historical view. So if we browse through the historical view, we'll notice that anywhere that Ignition used a dot or a forward slash, we break and create folder structure. And then eventually we get to our tags within the path. I'd like to create a new view that makes it simpler to browse and then names the sites and the conveyors as assets. To begin to create a new view, I can browse the tags that I've imported through the dataset, and I can see the list on the right, 
and it shows me the physical name or the way they're archived inside of the Canary Historium. Now this is the exact same as the SCADA tag name that we selected in Ignition, except that I've added a demo data set to the front of it. To the left is the way that we're currently seeing that tag through this view that we've created. And that's what we're going to change using regular expressions. By adding a regular expression rule, I can use my regex to match on the tag names, capture the unique items within the tag name that I'd like to keep, and then create new alias names and add structure to the tags as needed. If you're not familiar with the regex, this will seem a bit uh, foreign to you, but rest assured if you'd like to learn regex, it's very easy to do and just takes about an afternoon of work. My goal here is to take the tag name and drop edge nodes and the front part of demo site one off of it. Now I'll match on the second part of the tag name, the CONV1, and I'll transform that to say conveyor space and then keep the instance of the site. All right, so the unified tag naming convention that I've used is I've described the site at the first part of the path. I've broken with a dot. I've described the asset and its instance in the second portion, conveyor number one or two or three, and then broken with a dot. And then I have my unique tag names for each conveyor, three alarms, a status tag, tonnage per hour, and yesterday's production. I'll use some asset rules to identify what a site is and what a conveyor is. Anything up to the first dot determines which site it's on. You can see my tags are now grouped by site. And now we'll add a conveyor to each site using the second part of the tag name. Now within site one, I can see my two conveyors and my three conveyors within site two, and each conveyor has the same tag naming structure. Three alarms, status, tonnage, and yesterday's production. I can go ahead and create this view. Now my client will see two different views that they can browse through, a view named Quarry and a view named Jeff-M, which is the historical representation. If they browse this view, the first thing they see is the sites that are available. At the next level, they see the conveyors and then the tags within the conveyor. All right, the next thing I'd like to do is take every conveyor within my uh, enterprise and build a calculation for those conveyors. The calculation tool allows me to pick assets, write expressions using asset tags, and then deploy those calculations across every instance of that asset. Let's build a five minute average for tonnage. I'd like to run this every minute. And I'm going to backfill it to 3 o'clock this afternoon. For my expression, I'll use one of the functions that's pre-built, time average. There's 70 in all to choose from. Insert my asset tag. 
and then pick a time interval for the calculation, five minutes. The last thing is to tell it where to place the tag, meaning which data set should we write the tag to. Because I'm doing asset calculations, the tag name that I write to should have the characteristics of the asset prepended to the tag. I can do that using the asset wildcard, which you see here. and then giving it a unique tag name. To deploy my calculation, I just hit the play button. I can see my calculation is already deployed across five assets and has made a total of 50 calculations including the backfill. From the system administrator point of view, I have completed all of the tasks that I need to provide my client with data that they can browse and build their own applications with. So I'll switch hats and I'll come to the client's perspective and I'll log into Axiom, which is our HMI trending application for dashboards, I do that just by coming to a web browser, opening up a new window, and typing in the name of my server. When I first launch Axiom, it assumes that I might want to open something I've previously created, like an application or a full page trending chart. To get started, I'm going to build a trending chart to demonstrate what our browse structure looks like now for our tags and some features about the trend charts. When I browse for tags, I have the ability to see all of the tags in my system, as well as any of the views that are available for my user credentials. The system administrator can control which views, data sets, and tags I have access to by using my Active Directory information and setting up those permissions for me. In this case, I can browse both the historical record and see the data sets that are in the system. And I can also browse the virtual view query that was created as an asset model. As I select views and folders or structure within the views, the tag list at right narrows. Additionally, by selecting something higher up in the chain, I can use the search feature and grab all of the tonnage. The Axiom trend chart is capable of placing multiple trends on their own individual bands. As you can see, we have five trends currently on the screen, and each one has its own band. Below is a legend as well as my uh, duration of trend chart and all of my navigation buttons. So I can place this in and out of live mode. I can change the duration on screen. You can see where I started to log data about roughly 15 minutes ago. And I can also select periods in time if I had enough data to look back in time and look at previous months or time periods. Additionally, each of these trends can be bound together simply by clicking the scales of one trend and linking it to another by hitting the chain link button. And I can break these apart just as easily. I can always add more trends by coming in and browsing for those trends. 
as well as delete trends by using the trend edit menu. Additionally, I have more than just the cursor mode that I can use. I can also zoom, use the delta feature, and make annotations. Each of my trends have their own menu items that I can change, including the draw style, line thickness and color, and I can apply multiple aggregates to the data. So right now I'm looking at about 13 minutes on my trend chart. I could ask to look at instead of a, a time average draw to give me a delta of change every one minute. So now every one minute, the red trend for site one conveyor one tonnage shows me the change. Let's apply that to both. And we'll base it on five minutes. Additionally, I'll thicken the line. I'll save my chart. And we'll use this chart again. Let's set it to 30 minutes. All right, next I'd like to show you how to use the Axiom application. Axiom has an edit tool built into its application screens. The edit tool opens or collapses all of the design tools at the left. We have the ability to create multiple screens, place items on those screens that then appear in a tree, with each item or control having its own set of properties. Let's begin by changing the dashboard size here in the center. For the most part, everything within Axiom is drag and drop. It's very simple, which means that you don't have to have any design background or special skill sets to use it. If I look at my controls, we have a trend graph. I'll drag it onto the screen and drop it. There we go. I can also open the chart that I just saved. Which was my delta view for sites one, uh, conveyor one and two. Let's go ahead and build out some more data on this display for the conveyor one and two. For that, I'm going to use the grid and I'll place a grid here at the top. A grid is like a table. It has columns and rows. I can place items in the grid 
And when I do so, it occupies a specific column or row in the grid. I'll set the grid to have two columns, a label, and a value box. Now each item inside of the grid has its own series of properties. So if I look at the label, I can see that I can change the text. And if I look at the value box, I can link to a source tag. The exact same tag picker comes up and I have the option to browse for my tag. I can also copy what I've already done. and change the tag it's linked to. Now on this one, I'll link to the tag that is the calculation of a five minute average. This is the same tag that we built with the calculation service. It's now populated our virtual view or our asset model, and it shows in every single conveyor even though I only build it one time. Additionally, I can do more than just show tags in their live state. I can show historical references to tags. So I could take my tonnage tag. Let's build a new one. We'll call this tonnage and we'll say, what was the number 15 minutes ago? We'll need another value box. Now this time, I'll link to the same tonnage per hour tag. But the difference is I'm going to apply a time shift. So this is the same tag as above but I'd like to use my start time and shift it backwards 15 minutes. Now minus 15 minutes. And this shows me the value for tonnage 15 minutes ago. I can do a little bit more with this. I could take that same information and look for a maybe a delta in the last 15 minutes. And so I would take the value box, shift it back 15 minutes from start time, and then tell it to look forward 15 minutes, take that 15 minute time bucket and apply a delta calculation. Give me the difference between the beginning of the 15 minute period and the end of the 15 minute period. As it updates, so does the aggregate. Now this was all for site one, conveyor one. Let's label that. I can grab the same table of data and copy it. and make this site one conveyor two. All I have to do is adjust the tags. All right. If I'm happy with the dashboard that I've created, I can save it. Just like my chart, I have public, private, and read-only folders available. I'll save this in my own private directory. Now, I might find it helpful to have this chart sent into my inbox every morning at 8 a.m. To do that, I use the reports feature. 
Reports allows me to pick applications that I've created or charts that I've created and schedule them for email delivery. To create a new automated report, all I do is select the application I'd like to use. Tell it what time to send the email. Which days of the week do I want to send it? We'll do just Mondays. What email address or to which group should it go? And I can even have it include the application as an image attachment. That way my users don't have to have access to the system in order to view the report. And now every Monday at 8 a.m., this application will be delivered to this group. Additionally, I can take the application that I've built and copy the URL address. I can come back into my Ignition project and using the iframe tool within the Ignition control group, I can embed my Canary application inside of Ignition. Canary is a very helpful trending and dashboarding tool that works within all kinds of different SCADA solutions. There's a lot of characteristics about the Canary trend charts that make them very advantageous for face plating into your SCADA projects. But one other really neat feature of Canary and its integration with Ignition is that the module also supports writing data or reading data, I should say, from Canary and publishing it into Ignition as a tag history provider. So now I should be able to find the Canary History tag history provider inside of my project. For instance, an Ignition Sparkline. There's Canary History. There's the asset model. And there's my calculated tag tonnage for five minutes. And as you can see, history immediately came into the system and will now update in real time, showing the last 15 minutes of one of those tags. I hope you've enjoyed this demo. Uh, we bit off a lot in a short period of time. I think in less than 25 minutes, we showed how to log data, how to build an asset model, create an asset calculation and apply it to all of your asset instances, build trend charts, applications, schedule an automated report, and then integrate all of your history into your SCADA solution. If you have questions, please type them into the webinar and Kyle and I will try to answer them at the end uh, of the program. Thank you. To recap, the Canary system includes everything we've previously discussed. The only things we license are the number of tags for the Canary historian and user licenses for the client tools, Excel add-in and Axiom. Everything is prepackaged and integrated in the Canary system. The first thing you need to decide is who will host the data. Either you can host in your own cloud solution or on-premise, or the data is hosted in the Canary cloud. Next, select the number of tags and clients needed. At Canary, we are very transparent with our pricing. If you visit our website, you can use a pricing calculator to build out your system needs and see your pricing options immediately. Here's an example of a base solution 
that includes 100 tags and one concurrent client license. The upfront purchase price is $4,000, or you can subscribe for $135 per month. Tags are priced at just $1.50 per tag. Once your system reaches 40,000 tags, you've unlocked an unlimited tag count, and your system can continue to grow without paying for additional tags. Here's a pricing example of an unlimited tag count with 10 client concurrent license. Canary can also provide a quote for an enterprise license agreement upon request. This would provide an unlimited number of Canary systems with all licensing restrictions removed. Getting started with Canary is easy. We offer free proof of concept and free 90-day trials. Once you've tested the Canary system, you can rest assured knowing it is priced at a fraction of the cost of other solutions. Finally, when it comes to training and deployment of the system, Canary offers free support for one year after purchase. You can feel comfortable training your team and deploying the system with success. We want you to be confident in knowing you're getting the most out of the Canary system. Thank you for your time and attention today. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me or a Canary representative. And remember, free 90-day trial system for webinar attendees. Thank you again for your time and attention today. We appreciate you joining us and learning how Canary can help you make the most of your process data.